Can Power BI connect to always on readable secondaries? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Patrick, kind of cute. How you doing? How you been? Hope you're great. Day is going great so far. Um, today in this video, we're gonna talk about part connecting. We're gonna talk about connecting Power BI to SQL Server always on readable secondaries. Does it work? Have you tried it? Well, in this video, it's going down. We're gonna figure it out today, all right? So, I've been, you know, I've been watching Twitter and Facebook, and a lot of people are posting questions about whether or not this will work. And so I decided, let's go into this. Let's figure it out. Let's see if it works um, to dispro disprove, you know, all the people that didn't think it worked. Because I'm pretty sure it does, but I never really tested it, all right? So how do we test it? How do we figure it out? head over to my laptop. First thing you need to do is configure always on, all right? If you haven't done it, so in my topology right here, I have two servers and I have a file share witness, okay? You can't see the file share witness here as a replica, but you can see that my primary is SQL01 and my secondary is SQL02. I have a single database and I have Power BI test as my listener name. It's essential that you have a listener. Listener is synonymous with the virtual network name that you used to use with clustering, right? So this is what, this is the listener is how client applications and users connect to the availability group, all right? Okay, once you have that done, then you need to configure your readable secondary routing pads, okay? And so there's a link that's gonna be posted in the comments below. If you don't know how to do it, how to get that set up. Once that's set up, um, the one thing that's essential to this that I kinda glossed over pretty quickly, um, I didn't even mention it, so I'm gonna rewind because I need to mention this, um, is that when you're setting up your availability group, if you wanted to use the read-only routing capabilities and always on, you need to specify, you know, if you wanna redirect all of your read operations to one of the secondaries when you set it up, you need to make sure that you set the readable property for your availability replicas to read intent only. There's a couple of choices in there. There is no read intent only and yes, you need to make sure you specify it as read intent only, okay? Once that's done, you're kind of ready to go. All right, so remember, I have specified my readable property for all my availability replicas to read intent only. So we're gonna open up the desktop and let's see what happens. Before I do that, before I do that, before I open up the desktop, check this out. So remember my primary is 01 and my secondary is 02. Keep that in your pocket. Don't forget about that. That's essential when I start going through the demo. So, you, so it'll, this will resonate a little better with you guys, all right? So let's go ahead and get the desktop open. Now, remember, 0202 is my secondary. And I wanna, I'm at first, the first thing I'm gonna try to do is direct connect to my secondary. You may go, Patrick, well, if I went through the problem of setting up the availability group, create my listener, why? I just wanna show you something. So walk with me, you know, go on this journey with me. Okay, so I'm gonna choose get data, and I choose SQL Server, and the name of my secondary is GIAC, Gynacube. So if you guys start seeing that acronym around, that hashtag around, it's Gynacube, right? GIAC, Gynacube, dash SQL, dash O2. Okay, I click OK. I'm just gonna import. Everything I'm showing works both on direct query also. It's prompting me for my credentials. Click connect it. Don't worry about that. If you don't have Windows, you can definitely use SQL authentication. Either one will work. Now I'm gonna connect to my database. Uh-oh, I got an error. And you know, it's a pretty good error that Microsoft is showing here, the product team, the, PB, the Power BI product team. Hey, can't do it because application intent is set for my readable secondary. So for you guys that are familiar with always on, what do I need to do? Well, it's simple. On my connection string, I need to add semicolon, application intent equals read only but doesn't look like the desktop is doing that. So I can't connect directly to the readable. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. So you can connect to the readable secondary, but I'm not gonna show it right now because I don't want to steal my thunder for the big show just in a few minutes. Just pay attention, right? Just pay attention. All right, so we're gonna hit cancel. What I'm gonna do is, just to make sure you guys can see the full demo and every all the steps, I'm gonna go and clear out all of my permissions in my data sources. All right. So everything's cleared out now, done. So now, instead of trying to direct connect, so if I wanted to, right, 
I can set the property, instead of setting the property on my secondary to read intent only, I could have just set it to yes, and I could connect directly to the secondary. The challenge, right? Why I'm not diving too deep into the secondary is, the challenge is if I connect directly to a secondary and a disaster happens or a failover happens, then all the offloading, all my, you know, all the work that I've done to offload my readable, my read workload to my readable secondary, it's pointless now because everything's connecting directly to my primary because application intent will redirect it, read only, ah, you know. So um, make sure you keep it set to read only if you wanna kinda scale out your workloads, writes over here, reads over there, right? But if I do set it to yes, Power BI will connect because it doesn't, just having the readable secondary property set to yes doesn't require that I add that property to my connection string, okay? All right, all right, enough of that. So back over on the desktop, this time, remember, I have a listener named PBI test, and I'm gonna connect to PBI test in the Power BI desktop. So we're gonna choose get data, choose get data, choose SQL server, and PBI test. This time, I'm gonna expand out checkbox, expand out advanced options, and there's a checkbox labeled enable SQL server failover support. What does that mean, Power BI product team? Don't worry, by the end of this video, you guys will know exactly what it means, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and click the checkbox and click OK. So now I'm connected. It's gonna prompt me for all the normal stuff, right? I'm gonna connect to my database, my server, I'm sorry. Don't worry about encryption. And then what I'm gonna do here is expand it out. Don't get an error this time, right? So it's telling me something's going on behind the scenes. So how smart is the Power BI desktop? Is it really adding? semicolon application intent to the connection string, gotta stay tuned to find out, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add these two to my report. I'm gonna go ahead and click load, not modifying, editing any, anything here in this video. I uh, massaged my data. <clears throat> Got in there and massaged it enough to make sure it was ready for this demonstration. All right, here we go. There's my data, two tables. One's just a view that does select add at server name. Right, because I want to know where the query is being run from. So I got that guy right there. Make it a card, and you can see it. Look, it's connecting to my secondary. Do you see? You see, it's connecting to the secondary. Remember, zero one is the primary, and zero two two is the secondary. Right. So I grab some data, make a little bar chart. There we go. Right. So now you can see that Power BI is doing something with that connection string. Don't quite know what it's doing yet. Um, I can assume, I'm guessing, um, but we'll find out in just a little bit. So let me show you something else. Just so for you guys that don't believe me, I'm gonna open up two profiler traces, okay? Yep, I'm using the profiler. Yep, I'm using the profiler. I know, I know, I know. Extended events, you should be using extended events. I know, all right? So in my profiler traces, I filled the application on mashup engine, okay? Because I only want the queries coming through the mashup engine, all right? So, oh, hang on, I'm gonna open up the Power BI desktop. So I get the Power BI desktop open, and so I have two tr profiler traces open. One on the left that's gonna be connected to my primary, and one on the right that's connected to my secondary, okay? So what I'm gonna do is refresh I'm gonna just refresh my data. And what you'll see is that on the right, the one that's connected to my secondary, you got all the noise, all this action happening, um, bringing the data in. But if you look at the one that's on the left, I got nothing. I got no data, nothing's happening. Um, no queries, I'm sorry, not data. Just love data so much. Nothing's coming through, it's just empty. So this is even further proven that Power BI is doing something in my connection string. So remember, on the left is my primary, on the right is my secondary, the left trace is not showing anything, the right trace is showing all my mashup information. Okay, all right, this is great. Does it work when it's published out to the service? So we know that the desktop supports all this stuff. It does everything that it needs to do. It, it's connecting to my secondary, but what about the service? What about the gateway? Does everything handle that? So you need to make sure you have your gateway download and install, right? Get everything properly set up. Go out to Power BI, go to your gateway. I'm gonna go to my gateway. And you'll see on my gateway that I've already added a listener 
You see my listeners already set up, just like I had a SQL Server. Exact same thing, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is go over to, I published my report already. Let's go to the data set. Let's be a little adventurous. So we're gonna go to the data set. We're gonna create a new report. Check it out, check it out. Server name is one. Hmm. So when I initially did this, it was, my secondary was a one, right? That's okay. You guys think I'm messing up, but I'm not. And here's my data, right? So we're gonna make this a car. So there's us 102 rows and I'm on 01, but that's because I haven't refreshed the data. Trust me, hang on one second. Before I refresh, I wanna show you something. I'm gonna insert 10 more rows. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is go out to Power BI, find my data set, and we're just gonna say, refresh now. And when my refresh is going through, it's going through the mashup engine, should have had my trace running. It is running, there it goes, here comes some stuff. Bam, 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 it's pulling everything in on the secondary. And now, when it finishes, it's refresh. Now, when, it, when I refresh my report, you can see that now I'm connected to O2, and there's 112 rows instead of two rows. Crazy, it works, I'm excited. For all you people that didn't think it worked, you didn't think our boys in the product team was on top of this, you're wrong. Bam, good job guys. All right, so what's happening on the covers? What's going on with that connection stream? Let me hand it over to Adam so we can actually show you what's going on on the connection stream. All right, Patrick, there's three ways that we can go about getting the connection string. This is really the way to verify what are we passing from an application perspective to connect to always on. So the first way is we can just go search the source code. However, that's internal and people outside of Microsoft won't be able to do that. So that's not really an option for this video. The second way is you can go use a tool called Just Decompile from Telerik, which will effectively allow you to look at a .NET application and look at the source code for that. It's not completely the source code, so you're not gonna see comments and things of that nature, but it gets you pretty close. So if, you, if you're comfortable with code, you can go look at that and you can kind of see what it's actually doing. The third way and probably my favorite way is get a dump. I love looking at dumps. So this is a memory dump. We can get that of Power BI Desktop and go look at what's inside of there. Again, this is .NET. So we have an extension, a debugger extension for WinDBG called SOS. It ships with .NET and you can use that on .NET applications. So this is something you can do at home if you're familiar with actually looking at memory dumps. It took me a long time to figure that out or as Patrick refers to it, the matrix. The thing to realize about the gateway, because we're going through the gateway in this case, this would hold true for Power BI Desktop as well, is there are sub-processes for the mashup engine. So not only do you have to get that gateway process, but more than likely the actual connection strings we're interested in are in mashup processes that are sub-processes. So I had Patrick go and get me the dumps for the gateway and all of those mashup processes and let's go look at my screen. We've got a couple of dumps here. I just decided to go with this first one in the list, which is the second mashup container process. And I went and pulled that up in a dump. And so we can do this. Uh, I've already loaded my SOS module and I am now gonna run dump heap stat and look for all of the SQL connection string objects inside of this dump. So let's go and run that. So we've got an item here and there are four of those items. So let's dump the method table. This will give us the addresses of each of those objects. Let's just go and look at the first object here. This is the actual breakdown of all the properties inside of our SQL connection string object. The first item in this list is the user connection string. The other things of notice here is you can actually see the individual items. So we can see right away multi subnet failover is set to one, which means it's true. We can also see that application intent is set to one. So this means it's a read intent. So now let's actually dump the actual connection string that's in this user's connection string object here. This is a string object. So let's click on that and boom, we can see multi subnet failover equals true. And we can see application intent equals read only. There you go, Patrick, there's your connection string. All right. Okay. What do you think? That was great. That was awesome. Got any questions about this, how we set it up, did I talk too fast, whatever, you know, post it in the comments below, all right? Um, if this is your first time visiting the channel, please be sure to subscribe. Um, if you like my video, 
give me a thumbs up. And as always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching.